we're talking about a beetle. Yeah, it's a 14 beetle. I think it's a pissed off beetle. Right? Is that, is that fair enough to say? Yep. Hey, what's up guys? We're over here in Covina, California with Eddie. And he is going to take us through his, I believe it's a VW. I think we're talking about a beetle. Yeah, it's a 14 beetle. I think it's a pissed off beetle. Right? Is that, is that fair enough to say? Yep. Fair enough to say. <laughs> Let, let's check this thing out, you guys. What's up, Eddie? Thanks for having us out here, man. Thanks Appreciate it, bro. Out. So uh, this thing is amazing, man. People have sent this thing into Terra Crew. I think of you out in Glamis um, with this thing, and people are very curious about it. They haven't seen it, so I, I think this is a really cool way to show people everything, man. We're here to bring you answers at Terra Crew, and, and here we go. What year making model is this thing, man? So this one, I'm using a 2014 Volkswagen Beetle body. 2014, okay. Yeah, so this was the last generation of these bodies. Previous to this, their body was a little bit shorter and, and quite a bit rounder. Okay. Uh, which to me wasn't aesthetically pleasing. Growing up as a kid, I always used to see the Volkswagen Baja bugs all over the road, you know, and I thought they were pretty cool. So I, uh, my idea was to make a new generation Baja. Yeah. Um, so I got the latest body that I could and it's been a labor of love. It's been uh, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, anxiety, a lot of uh, having to figure shit out on my own. Here we are five and a half years later. I never thought it would take me this long, but... But um, you have it. Right. Whenever I had a chance, you know, I would work on it and, and rework on it and do something and then do it again because I didn't do it right or right. I didn't like the way it turned out. But uh, just figuring out things, you know, figuring out the, the travel, you know, I had to raise the fenders three inches to make sure that they would clear, um, yeah. clear the tires and stuff. And uh, it's running about 20 inches of travel in the front. Nice. So just going into this thing, um, what what chassis is this? So the arms and the and the chassis were built by BFD. BFD. Uh, okay. Yeah. It, I'm not I'm not a seasoned professional fabricator. So okay. the hardcore stuff, the safety stuff, I didn't do. You know, okay. I, I had someone that knows what they're doing, build that kind of stuff, and then pretty much I picked it up from them as a rolling chassis. Nice. And did most of the stuff afterwards. Uh, some of the more detailed aluminum work. Again, I'm not a fabricator, so some of that stuff was outsourced. Okay. Uh, but like the fenders, like I said, I, I figured out and did myself, my roof rack. Which looks so awesome, man. I mean, this has such a cool look to it. It looks very like, like so sleek, but, but aggressive too. It's, it's just such a great, great looking body. That roof rack is really badass, dude. I, I love that thing. It adds Thank a lot you. of personality to it, you know? You. So the chassis was built by these other guys, and are, do they do they still build stuff, or? Yeah, they're still in business. They, they primarily do uh, sand cars. Okay. Uh, and they're out of Ramona, California. I what actually, a... you know, they were probably the third guys I went to to have this built. Uh, okay. The first two guys kind of blew me off, and uh, one guy took a deposit from me and never did anything. So no! I took it back. Oh, shoot, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I took the car back, and then, you know, just finding people to it's to, hard, dude. To actually do the work, yeah. It's hard out there, guys, you know? I mean, coming from a, a, a customer standpoint, I, I, I don't fab. I wish I did, you know? I think I would have been a lot farther in my build to be able to, like, help out or even, like, take things on my own. But as you guys can see, Eddie was kind of pushed in a way to kind of make it happen, man. You right. know, like, you got to be you gotta be on it. You got to, like, follow through. You got to make sure the, the shops are following through to their... Um, to the agreements they made, right? Yeah. And if they don't, you gotta pull your stuff and that's cool, go separate ways and, and find somebody who did and, and you were able to do that. Right. And this is why you have a finished product. Right. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, that don't get their trucks finished or their or their Baja bugs or anything, but um, just gotta stay on it, guys. So don't lose faith, don't lose faith. So once you got it as a rolling chassis, what was the next step? Figuring out the layout. I had a lot of stuff to squeeze in here. Uh, it's running a, a Stroke LS2 supercharged, so I had Ooh. to find uh, you know space for the Radiator, the intercooler, intercooler pump, trans pump. Trans so powertrain was the main focus first before yeah, getting into. And, and just making sure I knew where everything was gonna go. Uh, so it's running AC. So under the back seat, I have my AC condenser. Okay. And I have an oil cooler and a, a transmission cooler that, that are all underneath the back seat. So nice. it draws air from the ground up. So once you packaged all the, the necessary stuff, um, then came the body? Then came making it aesthetically pleasing, making sure, okay. sure that everything fit in here and that it didn't look like it was just bolted onto the outside of the car, or, you know, right. just 
you know, cheesy. You want it to be clean. Yeah, so yeah. if you look at the interior, you can't even tell that the that it has anything running underneath the back seat. So it just looks like a regular back seat, but underneath that seat, it does have the the AC condenser and, and two uh, two coolers. Nice man. Uh, and that seat, I purposely made it small because I wasn't sure how much room I would have. Right. It could be a little bit bigger. I can okay. get back there comfortably, but I'm about as big as you can get back there. Right, right. So it's okay. nicer for someone smaller than, than myself. Well, it looks super roomy, man. Actually, I didn't even realize there was a back seat to this until you mentioned it. Because, it, I mean, it looks so compact, but then when you kind of get in there, it looks super deep. That's okay. awesome, man. So you're running some PRP harnesses? PRP harnesses. I think these are BS seats, and they are in sliders. And that was one of the biggest things for me is I wanted to make sure that it was a four-seater. Okay. Uh, you, you've seen a lot of Baja bugs done out there with the older bodies, and you'll never see anything more than two seats in those. Right. And then you're rubbing shoulders with the guy next to you because they're really narrow. Right. But there was a car done like this with the previous body, the 2010 body, and it was also just a two-seater. Oh, that, that's the gray one we had mentioned. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So this is kind of like a first of its kind with, with the four seat like this, man. I mean, at least that I've known, I've never I, seen I one either. I haven't seen another one. Right. Um, so yeah, I think it's... As of right now, it's it's one of a kind. It's, it's the only one out there with this particular body, but. Heck yeah. I mean, look how beautiful this is, you guys. I mean, normally we don't hop into interior first, but I think we got to go over this, man. You want to take us on an inside tour real quick? So obviously it's it's not, there's not much left of the bug. Right. But I am still running the, the stock door panels and the stock dash. Okay. Um, so oh, the, this is the stock dash? Yes, this is the stock we have Volkswagen dash, the shell oh, of it. Oh man. But then I am running, you know, aftermarket gauges, of course, and my, uh, this actually was a hole that was there uh, originally. I think it was a vent or something, but oh, actually it was a little dial for your dimmer. Okay. But my gear indicator fit in there perfectly, so that was oh, no pretty way. badass. There yeah. you go. And then again, you know, I'm running two of the uh, Switch Pros, and then I have the car to car and the in car radios, and then can't forget the AC. We got the AC here. AC. Oh my gosh. How was that, man? It, getting it, AC in here. That that was tricky, also, but but okay. it, it works. It works great. The car does have power windows and door locks and the AC, so it's pretty cool. Dudes, this is this is like the perfect pre runner right here. Four seater AC power window oh my gosh man get out of here eddie you're making everybody jealous bro so man you even got cup holders this is a really cool center console battery shut battery off right shut here off. we got the uh, quick release extinguisher right here and then you got this leather detail right here looks super good but i am in love with this stock dash it looks super futuristic it, i didn't even know what the inside of these beetles look like so when i seen it it almost looks like some like fiberglass custom work that you got done yeah i'm happy with the way that turned out i'd like to keep a little bit tied into the Volkswagen bug, you know, that was still somewhat original. And then you got a radio in here. So I have that, I was going to use that just as a backup camera. I don't have sounds in here as okay. a bit. Uh, okay. I'm not big on sounds, you know, I like to hear the motor. You just want to feel the, feel yeah. the vibe, yeah. So I'm, I'm running a PBS 5-speed sequential transmission. Ooh, okay. So you got your, your, your gear shifter, you got your reverse here, uh, and of course your turn brakes. Okay. Standard stuff for this first sand car. It's running uh, 934 CVs. It's good heavy duty, not... Not the strongest, but pretty strong. I have gray area, 934 mid-board hubs. CarTech axles in it, um, and then... Uh, and what kind of hubs? Gray area. How have those things been holding up? So far, so good. Excellent, No, man. No, no issues. Uh, the car doesn't have a whole bunch of time on it, but it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. Heck yeah. What's up with these uh, little uh, lights up here? What do you got? They're my dome lights. I probably only needed one. I didn't know how bright they were gonna be. Oh, there you go. Dang, yeah, they, man. They probably only needed to run one, but uh, but it does light up pretty well. It looks great, dude. The, the, the inside of this thing just looks amazing, man. Um, you did such an incredible job. Look at that big old wide rear view mirror, too. So speaking uh, of the wide rear view mirror, yeah. I'm, I'm running the stock mirrors, which oh, is cool. Okay. So I you know, I get, I have a lot of visibility, and the stock mirrors have the integrated turn signals in them. Oh, nice. Because I drive this on the street. Oh, okay. So I do... I do uh, Take it around town here and there. That's cool. Um, Take it in and out for a, a burger and a shake or something. Absolutely, dude. I bet people are stoked on this thing. Yeah, I, I like it. the reactions it gets. Uh, I'm I'm kind of low key, so I don't like a lot of attention, but I do like that people give me the thumbs up and stuff yeah. like that. You know. All right, man. So tell us about the uh, the suspension on this thing, Eddie. Um, you were mentioning it has like 18 inches of front wheel travel. Or? So the the pro travel is about 20 inches. 20. Okay. But I'm running two inch hollow spindles, Fox shocks, triple bypass in the front and rear. I think the bypass on this one is 2.5s. Okay. And the coil levers are 2.0s. It's running a RBP rack with electric power steering. Is, is that kind of standard on like sand cars? The electric power steering is coming in pretty popular right now. It's very simple to run. You don't have to run hydraulic lines all the way back to the motor. Mm. And uh, Interesting. 
I don't think we've had a car uh, featured with electric steering. Electric yeah, and it's steering. user friendly. It has, you know, you, you can dial in the quickness of the steering. You can you can adjust how really? how, how quickly the steering uh, reacts. So uh, that's that's some futuristic stuff, man. Well, you know, yeah. In the, with our older sand cars, we used to run a Charlene system, and the Charlene system was basically like a um, forklift power steering unit, mm. and they're really sketchy on the road. They're mm. just they're just too quick, and you can't really slow them down, so they, they're really sketchy for the road. So you either have to go with the with, with the higher end Howl system, uh, Howl rack, and- uh, Which can get pretty pricey. They get pricey, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then light setup, what do you what you got going on up here, man? So I have a combination of, of a couple different lights. You know, I have the light bar, light bars for, uh, you know, for the up close stuff, and then I have some uh, Baja design for some longer distance. I actually just added these little guys, these little Baja designs. Yeah. And those little things are bright, man. I was pretty, I was really? pretty surprised. Yeah. You know, it doesn't surprise me at all. What's up, Baja Designs, the <laughs> homie? You know what? For years, I've always wanted to be a Baja Designs guy. I'm proud to be a Baja Designs guy. Awesome. So I'm pretty stoked with their product. Yeah, I would love their own Baja Designs all over the car, but it, it, they're a little pricey. Yeah, they're they're a little <laughs> pricey, but you do get what you pay for, right? Absolutely. So, so just these pods are just like you're like, what the heck? And I mean, if you guys can tell, they're they're not very big, they're but tiny. damn, they're, they're, they're bright, huh? Yeah, they are. Tell me about this tire and uh, wheel setup. So I'm running 35 inch BFGs on the front on Raceline wheels, and I'm running a 37 in the rear. Uh, I was running 35s all the way around, but I, I, I felt that the gear ratio wasn't quite right. Okay. So with the 37s, it gives me better gear ratio, it gives me better cruising speeds, because like I said, I do drive it on the street, I drive right. it on the freeway. Right. Uh, so on the freeway, I can do, you know, 75 miles an hour and okay. still be at 3,300 RPMs, which nice. is nice and comfortable. Right, right. Um, but with the 35s, it just wasn't having it? No, nah, it was just was, was a little, little too high on the RPMs. Okay. And then, did you want to share how this thing pops up, first of all? This is awesome. The Volkswagen right there. Yeah, you know? so this just has a little bit of storage underneath. So again, like, you know, this is just for sweaters, Excellent. sweaters or whatever, you know, you want to throw in here. Um, and I got a little bit more storage under that. Nice. So you could actually put some stuff up here. Yeah. Tow rope, maybe. Uh, tow rope, just your, you know, your, your chip, a bag of chips, you know, whatever yeah, you want to do for your day ride. and. Uh, That's cool. And then I also have a couple of uh, extra reserve fuel in there because uh, this thing does suck it down. I would imagine so with it, that uh, motor. This is so cool, though, man. Very, very pu purposefully built, dude. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that actually worked out really well. It looked like it was planned out, but it was kind of an afterthought. After, oh, really? After I ran out of fuel in Glamis. You're so. like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe we got to get a little more, huh? Yeah, so, so okay. that, that definitely worked out pretty well. It actually fits like it like it was intended to be there in the first place. Excellent, man. That's a really cool compartment. This this thing just looks so visually pleasing. It almost looks like it has like a RC car, like supercar kind of vibe. It almost looks like something that'd be drawn in like a cartoon or something. It looks so cool. You want to take us through the rear of this thing? Yeah, so another one of the other big concerns that I knew going into building this car was the, obviously an enclosed body is going to make the car run hot. From the very get-go, I always had, I always looked at a way to keep the car cool. So I, I had uh, Amol at Amol Fabrication, he built these, uh, these okay. air intakes for me. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So those actually draw in air and, and run it back to the motor. But on top of that, up here in the front, the rockers are hollow, so there's a tunnel here. So I I, I, I even use that to draw air in. Nice. So that that's that's funnel funneled back to the motor. This is all purposefully built, man. And yeah. I mean, I love the way that this even flares, as you guys can tell. This kind of like almost draws air into this section, the way it is. It looks awesome. And then the the roof rack does the same thing. So really? the roof rack has a purposefully put gap in here, okay. so it sucks air in here. And then the inside of the roof is is acting as the floor of this tunnel. And that also draws air, but as you nice. can see, it's not running right down the the rear the rear uh, what, the rear glass. yeah the rear glass. Okay. So it's actually using these tunnels here. So all this air is drawn in, and it's being channeled through here, and then out into the radiator. Into the radiator. Wow. So wow, again, look at tunnels, this guy. These tunnels here. Right in here, they, they open, they, that's where the inlet is for the air. So all of that is being drawn into the intercooler radiator. So tell us about this whole package right here, man. What do you got going on? So this is a, a stroke Dallas 2. Okay. Uh, it's about a 402 cubic inch. It's running a smaller uh, uh, supercharger. On the dyno, I did about 670 horse. Holy crap. So it, it's not a ton of power, but it's good power. 
Um, yeah. and, and the car runs good. It, it, it handles great. It, it, it's fun to drive and it's reliable. Um, well, I mean, man, super cheese. This is, this is some serious business, man. How does it feel in the dunes versus the desert? Because I know you've taken it to both, correct? Yeah, so I, I am primarily a, a sand guy, primarily a dune guy. Okay. Uh, the hard pack is not my favorite. Your preference, right? It's not yeah. my preference, but right. it is, it's fun. It handles the whoops really well. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, but I do prefer it in the dunes. I love drifting the car in the dunes. Uh, I love, you know, just powering up a, a, a good sized sand dune. Yeah. And just feeling the torque. I like to feel the torque, you know. Yeah. In the, in the, in the gravel or in the hard pack, you're spinning tires all the time and you don't feel that, you know, the G-forces as much right. as you do in the sand. So I, I really like that a lot. So uh, what about headers and all that good stuff and exhaust? So actually these headers, uh, I bought the headers from a guy that was selling them online. Okay. And then uh, I ran the car with the setup that I bought from him for a season. Made it a little too quiet for my liking. Mm. So I just rebuilt these. I, I used the original headers. But then I used some Black Widow mufflers. Oh, nice. Okay. And then uh, I, I made them, you know, the two into one. Okay. Uh, so, so it now, gives you a, a, a nice sound, huh? It, it gives it a little bit more more of a pissed off sound. Pissed off beetle sound. Exactly. Oh, uh, you like that? Yeah, uh, you like how I did that plug right there? <laughs> so that was, the, that was the intention. Right on, man. And then, of course, uh, you know, again, with heat being a big factor, I did wrap all the exhaust to, to try to keep the engine compartment a little bit cooler. Excellent. But it does have a lot of venting as well. Excellent. So uh, it does let all the, the excessive heat out. So uh, as far as fuel safe, what, what, where is that guy? The fuel cell? So yeah, I'm the fuel running, cell. Uh, I'm running a Harman cell. Oh, okay. It's under here. It, and that was another, I'm, I'm kind of big into safety. So oh, I see I, it. Okay. It's got a liner in it. Um, you know, you hear all the horror stories of guys crashing and their cells break. And my daughter rides with me all the time. We don't She's, want that. My daughter's my co-pilot. Heck yeah, man. Safety's number one. That's awesome. What size is that tank? So again, because we're fighting, we're fighting uh, with real estate here. I, I wish it was bigger, but I could only get a 17-gallon cell in there. Okay, so that's why you have those spares. That's there why I have my, my little auxiliary okay. take-alongs because uh, 17 gallons is sounds like a lot, but yeah. when you're ripping through the dunes, it goes pretty quick. This car is so originally built. I love the whole chassis and the way everything's laid out. The body work you guys did is phenomenal. I'm really liking this thing, man. I'm sure people are going to want to see more of this. Man, I, I, I wish I had more awesome bug questions. I wish Blake Blake Wilkie was here. He, he'd probably like to do this episode. But dude, I, I'm loving this thing. Is there is there any chance of you to start this thing up for us? Sure, let's fire it up. It's, it's, yeah, man. It's a little cold blooded, so let me. Uh, yeah, sure. Some gas and see what she wants to do. I mean. Well, you know what, Eddie? It's, it's all warmed up, so I mean, man, it was, I hate to put that to waste. I, I know, yeah. almost wish we need to maybe go for like a little cruise or something. Yeah, you what know. Do you <laughs> you know, free, it's free legal for a reason. That might be kind of cool. Let, <laughs> let's do it, man. You know, I don't mind hanging out a window and, and checking this thing out in action. Let, let's, let's get going, man. Let's check this thing out. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode with our buddy Eddie. Thank you so much for Thank you, man. letting us Appreciate cruise it. out here. If you guys have any questions for Eddie regarding the bug, we'll throw some contact right here for you guys to holler at him or whatever. Eddie, I heard a rumor that this possibly might be for sale. Is that true? Maybe. You know, everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. You hear that, guys in Dubai? You hear that? 
anyways guys thank you guys so much for checking out this episode i hope you enjoyed it as much as we did this thing is definitely one of a kind very unique and we're very glad to feature it on the channel be sure to check out eddie in in glamis and uh in akatia with the fam awesome. we'll see you guys next time thank you so much comment like and subscribe to the I'll channel see you guys out there heck yeah we'll right see you guys on. take care bye-bye Thank <laughs> you.